Oh, no, you don't. Where do you think you're going? Get over there! <laughs> now, I told you this is not a fishing channel. I've told you that many times. This is a NASCAR channel. People come here to watch NASCAR stuff. So make a video about NASCAR, okay. dang it. You just bought a new truck. You gotta pay for it hey. somehow. Yeah. Uh, hi? So, I'm Danny B, and as now you know from my channel, NASCAR is a big part of my life right now. And really, it's always been kind of a big part of me, but there was a certain time when it just really, really, really became big in my life. And I want to share that story with you guys, and it really affected my own personal life as well. I don't work in a sport at all, but being a fan and being as passionate about the sport as I am, I just want to share my story. How NASCAR changed my personal life. Let's start from the beginning. So, growing up at a young age, probably, I guess it was about 2002, 2003, when I really started to uh, learn about what NASCAR was and watch it on TV. And I think specifically what really stands out to me was when I was a first fan, I was actually a fan of Jeff Gordon. And I, I loved the number 24 car. I loved the, uh, the, the flames. I loved uh, everything about uh, Jeff Gordon's car. At a young age, I think that's really what draws kids into the sport is the pretty cars, you know. And what stands out most to them, for me, it was the uh, blue and red DuPont flame uh, Chevrolet. Then, what transitioned me into uh, wanting to watch this sport more often? Well, I guess we contribute that to one thing, and that's video games. This right here, NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup, still one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, so much so that I actually uh, got it just because it's my favorite one. Um, it's got Kevin Harvick on the front. Uh, and what I love about this one is it was so in depth with the career mode you could. And what I love about this game in particular is just uh, how in depth the career mode is and how much it really is to do. And it really taught me in a, a, uh, when I was younger that it wasn't just the Cup Series that I was seeing on TV all the time. Um, that I learned then that there was other series for, for a game. I learned about the Bush series, I learned about the truck series. Young child never knew that there was a modified series at all when I was younger. The games for me, that kept me entertained. It kept me excited from all the way to uh, through middle school. And then by 2009, um, I actually got a chance to go to my first race at Bristol Motor Speedway. The Scott's Turf Builder 300. I still remember that all of Vividly, my mom took me and a friend of mine. Was we thinking we, I guess, in a search for free parking, we parked way, 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 uh, way away from the speedway, and we had to go like we was way past the drag strip. I'm pretty sure at Bristol, we had to go down this big hill and finally up, and then try to figure out where the heck we were supposed to go. It was just a nightmare. Uh, my mom still called it Heart Attack Hill to this very day. Either way, we ended up going and I got to watch the Nationwide Series race uh, in the Scotts Turf Filter 300. It was very fascinating. I didn't really know much about the Nationwide Series in 2009. I didn't really know who many of the drivers were. At that time, I was still kind of like a casual NASCAR fan. Um, I started rooting for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, he had just switched to Hendrick Motorsports the year before in 2008. And the time we had just moved into a new house and I wanted to decorate my room something cool. I actually decorated in NASCAR stuff in 2008 and saw that Walmart was selling a bunch of the Dell Jr. Uh, Amp Energy National Guard stuff and I just and I decided I wanted to root for him since he was coming to Hendrick Motorsport so about all that so when I saw an 88 car at the race at Bristol well I said hey I, I don't see Dell Jr. but I see an 88 I'm gonna root for this guy and it turned out it was Brad Keselowski. Did really good in the race. I think he got, I know he got a top 10. I can't remember how good he did exactly. I remember Brendan Gaughan got the pole award for this race, driving for Rusty Wallace Racing. And then Kyle Busch ended up in the lead for a long time. And I remember that was the first time I'd heard driver introductions. That was the first time I'd heard how loud Kyle Busch gets booed at Bristol. And it, enough has changed. Enough has changed to this day at all with that. And that those are, those are memories that are so vivid in my mind. And it's stuff that like that, that kind of like makes you, really appreciate the experience of going to a race right there and 
that's something that can't ever be replaced. Now, what ended up happening that race, I know Kyle Busch had an issue with the uh, pits. He ended up not winning. Kevin Harvick won, and I didn't notice at the time, but, uh, you know, later found out that was actually the first time that uh, Kevin Harvick had won as an owner and driver. I thought that was really cool. It's kind of neat like that to look back and say, oh, yeah, I was there for that. That's pretty neat. Over the course of the next few years after that, though, uh, I went to my next race. The next year, I went to the exact same uh, Nationwide Series race. This time with my dad. Went to the uh, 2010 Scott Sturfielder 300. At the time, uh, Brad Brad Keselowski had moved on to Penske. And I was rooting for uh, the, the two junior motorsports drivers. And I think, um, I can't remember who was in the seven. Maybe it was uh, Scott Wimmer. Uh, driving the car to Danica was kind of part-time at that time. Uh, Kelly Byers, I remember rooting for him in the 88 Hellman's car, and I think he got a top 10. As few starts as Kelly Byers made that season, he got a top 10. Uh, there's a big wreck, and Justin Allgaier won. I can go on and on about the races that, that I first got to see, but at that point, I knew I was starting to get drawn in. I was starting to watch it week in and week out, and I was watching all the series. I wasn't just watching the Cup Series anymore. I was, I was hooked. I was watching all the series, so much so that I, I'm pretty certain I annoyed my mom. My mom in particular. My dad not so much, but I'm pretty sure I might have annoyed my mom. <laughs> and if she's watching this, I'm sure she understands what I'm referring to. Just of how much I was I was just watching NASCAR. And it's all I thought about. It's all I was talking about. I started thinking maybe I wanted to find a way to do a job in it one day. And actually, at one point, I thought for sure I wanted to go to the University of Northwestern Ohio and learn how to do something maybe in the uh, garage area, but you know, looking back on it, I'm glad I didn't. I'm not a very mechanical guy, I can do some things, but either way, I did kind of like say, hey, I might be interested in 2011 because I, I was graduating college in 20, sorry, I was going to go to college in 2013, not going, not graduating. So I was going to go to college in 2013 and I needed to find a school to go to. And at 2011, at the uh, race in Bristol, I guess I had signed up to kind of be uh, recruited, I guess. Hey, I gotta give this to UNOH. They're very strong on recruiting. But they actually sent me free tickets to go watch the 2011 truck race at Bristol. Yeah, that's very strong tactics right there to get someone to want to go to your school. Um, I did go, and I enjoyed it. That was the first time I, I went to a truck race. Um, I had been to a few cup races at that point, so I could finally say I've seen everything up to that point at Bristol. And yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Ultimately though, I didn't go there. Went to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and during this time period, Fishing was getting really big in my life. I picked it up in high school, started doing a lot more in college. I went over this before. There was another video on this. And at this point in my life, NASCAR and me, I was actually starting to kind of get away from it. I wasn't I wasn't really getting to go to as many races when I was in the first part of college and uh, started not watch it as much. My roommates didn't like it. There wasn't really much incentive for me to be watching. I was trying to focus on school. Yeah. A lot of people my age really didn't think NASCAR was cool. And I don't think they still do. There's still there's still a lot of people my age who don't like it, don't want anything to do with it, don't want to watch it. And I get that. It's not for everyone. I'm not a big fan of basketball. You know? I'm not a big fan of baseball. A lot of people like it, and I, hey, that's fine. But for me in NASCAR, people in my high school, and not so much in college because people didn't really do that, but people in high school more or less would sometimes pick on you. They'd, they'd, they'd bully you a little bit. Or even like it, make make fun of you for watching it, and I guess that kind of kind of held me down a little bit. So for me to be in college and be open about it, kind of a hard thing to do. So that brings me into a point where I met this nice girl. Her name was Claudia. Of course, now you know her as my fiance, Claudia. But at the time, uh, she was not an NASCAR fan when we first met, and it it took a little bit of um took a little bit of convincing to get her to want to watch any of it and then we went to her first race the 2016 Sydney series race at Bristol I don't think she was really anticipating going to a race more or less I kind of knew that if I wanted her to go I'd kind of have to just have the tickets and say we're going but I took her and I think she didn't quite understand what was happening but she definitely didn't know anyone even then even if I took her to a cup race I still don't think she would have known anyone because she wasn't really watching it. This wasn't really her thing. But we went, and Eric Jones won. She still doesn't even remember to this day that Eric Jones won, and I do. But we enjoyed ourselves, and 
ended up uh, later that year. I guess uh, she kind of started, you know, asking me a little bit about NASCAR here and there. I'd tell her about it. Then she kind of mentioned to me, hey, I think I might like to go to another race. And I said, well, hey, you want to go to the up race? at Bristol in August? Because after all, you know, we're also going to be going to watch the uh, Tennessee Volunteers football game at Bristol, you know, in September. Why don't we go to a race just a few weeks before? So we went. Um, and to kind of get ready for that, we actually watched the Michigan race that happened before that one. And I think at that point, that's when me and her started to realize this is something we both like to get. For me, that was really big for me, to have something that, was that common of an interest with the girl that the girl that I liked at the time. Uh, now, more more than like, I'm making this awkward. Anyway, so I remember that one so vividly. We we watched uh, Chase Elliott lose the race to Kyle Larson. I think she kind of found herself wanting to see Elliott win. And then we went on to the 2016 Cup race, and we had to come back the next day because it got kind of rained out after only a 50 lap. We came back because it was Sunday. We were in college, had nothing going on. We could do that. We did that, and we enjoyed it. I think she really enjoyed it, and I could tell she was invested. She wanted to see how the rest of that season went, and I think a little bit later on, she started to kind of have an idea how NASCAR works, what makes it so popular, what really draws people into it. She just slowly, over time, got it. And even then, she started to really appreciate this uh, collecting side of things. She even has a collection of her own now, and that's, to me, awesome to have... A girl who is not only fine with me collecting, but she collects herself. We finally start to really bond with each other. We, we love spending time with each other. But for us to really appreciate, want something so common like NASCAR, it's such a big thing. And, it, and that's how my personal life has really started to change because of NASCAR. This is something that me and my fiance both love. Now, fast forward a little bit. 2017 comes around. We are really enjoying the sport. We went to the spring race at Bristol. We went to the spring Talladega race. You know, that's the first time that we had went on a trip somewhere else other than Bristol. When we were in college, Bristol was only an hour and 45 minutes away. That wasn't that long. Talladega was more than four hours away. So we got up early and she kind of decided Chase Elliott was her driver. And big, big thing for her, she got to meet Chase Elliott there at the track. Dale Jr. was the driver I rode for the longest, and I met him only one time, and it took me until he was retired to meet him. She got to meet her driver early in his career. That's awesome. She got um, a license plate signed by him. That was, uh, that was, big, that was big for her. Um, she still has that on display in her little collection area. That was a fun race. This is all before I was Danny B too. And in the middle of the summer, I had started. I I graduated college, and I'd been working a little bit uh, as a hotel manager and my business where I designed wraps for fishing kayaks that I no longer do. Um, I'd made enough money with that. Well, I bought an engagement ring, and I started planning everything out. The 2017 night race at Bristol. Uh, we went. I had tickets to go to both the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series. I took her with me. And I made this all work out just according to plan. We went to the Xfinity Series race. We enjoyed everything. And I had to make sure that the engagement ring was hidden. So that was very difficult. I had to hide it because she was staying, uh, she was staying, like I guess we were staying at the apartment I was in. I was in uh, the guest bedroom on an air mattress. She, she crashed in, in my room. And I had to make sure that I was hiding it from plain sight. And I would... Uh, just have to make sure that Saturday morning, because we would get up, we, we got up really early, go Saturday. And I had to make sure it was just kind of in the cargo pocket of my shorts. And at one point, this was where it got scary to me. She was being just, you know, you know how girls can be. I guess she was like, uh, saying something like, give me your wallet. I want to I spend some money. We're, we want to buy some stuff. And uh, I usually, I guess, keep my wallet like more on my left side. Well, I guess she reached where my uh, keys are. And I was I was thinking, oh gosh, don't, please, please don't reach for the other pocket. Don't reach for the other pocket. Don't reach for the other pocket, because that's, that's where the ring was. Talk about nervous. I couldn't let anything show, because I was not going to ruin this day. Ended up, we had, we had tickets to go down onto the track, and my dad was also coming too. I got him a ticket as well, and we had tickets to go walk on the track before the race. We did that. My dad was with us, he was, and he was taking our picture. Well, I kind of, uh... I was surprised her a little bit. Took a picture with her, and my dad was sitting there with two phones, and 
She didn't really make too much of it. Why my dad had two phones? I guess she kind of thought, you know, just take a picture on both. He's actually re recording on one. And, well, I kind of just told her, hey, wait a second. Got down on one knee, right in front of Chase Elliott's car. Her favorite driver proposed to her right on the track at Bristol Motor Speed. Right off of turn two, right on the apron, I got engaged at Bristol Motor Speed. Now, if you don't think NASCAR is a big part of my life, then you're wrong. I got engaged at Bristol Motor Speedway. And now, fast forward... We've been to a lot of races together. After that uh, race, like towards December, it had been a while since my YouTube project, Fishing of Leonid, and I'd been watching a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of channels. And I remember thinking, you know what? This is a big part of my life. I got engaged at a NASCAR race. I should talk about NASCAR. I should find a way to share my interest in sport. Well, I did. I made a YouTube channel. For a long time, I'd been watching guys like, the first channel I really loved was a guy named Paul Foddy, he had Lego NASCAR 88 fan. I remember watching his stop motion. Now, I'm, granted, I'm friends of Geno Harvey and Eric Eastep today, but Paul's uh, stop motions really got me into this whole NASCAR YouTube scene. And then I became a big fan of Joseph Lombard and his channel into SCR. Started watching his, his gaming stuff at a, at a young age, uh, probably about middle, uh, middle school, high school age, I guess I was. Started watching him. Then I was also a fan of a guy named 18 Diego DD, Diego Alvarado. Uh, I don't really see as much from him anymore. I know he's still he's still active on YouTube a little bit. He's just not as big as I guess he was at that time. And then I just thought to myself, hey, I think I've got what it takes to do this YouTube thing. So I decided, hey, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel. Don't know what don't know where what direction it's gonna go. But I'm gonna do it. Danny B talks. That sounds good to me. Now here I am today. It took me a while. I, I I definitely experimented plenty on YouTube. Um, I tried the gaming stuff. I tried. This style of video where I'm just talking, granted I don't do these a whole lot, this one I am. But yeah, I I made my YouTube channel, and I've been doing it ever since. Kind of adapted into more of this uh, history style video, of course, with Danny being in a minute. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing. And I also get paid for what I do. That's the, that's the coolest part. The situation that just happened to me here recently, my truck died. My, my 2005 Ford Ranger, it just went out. Fuel pump went out. And it left me in a situation where I needed to get a truck. Fortunately, I kind of evaluated my situation I was in. And me and Claudia were close to getting married. We're going to get married in October. And we kind of evaluated my situation. And we figured out with what I've been making these last few months on YouTube, as long as it can stay consistent, well, thanks to you guys and the AdSense money from the from your all's views, watching my stuff, I should be able to afford my truck. It's all because of Danny B Talks. It's all because of NASCAR. My love for this sport, my passion for it, my interest, in it, all led to where I am now. So thankful for everything. When I say that, I mean it. I mean it. For YouTube to have this platform for a guy from Tennessee just ramble on about NASCAR, why he likes it so much, talk about the history, talk about what's happening, get on a podcast with three of my new best friends, Eric Eastep, Jarrett Lundberg, Darren Gilliam. It's a really exciting experience. For me. You told me... Three years ago, Daniel, you're going to be called Danny B. You're going to have a pretty good following on YouTube. You're going to make enough money per month from YouTube to afford a truck. Probably laughed at it. Here I am now. Keys to Toyota Tacoma. And I'm basically being able to pay for each month from YouTube. Like I said, I've made some good friends. I've made some good friends along the way. Met a lot of awesome people. Got to do some exciting things. I got to film a show at Bristol Motor Speedway this year. A production company from Denmark. Um, I'm going to spend five day uh, trip to Bristol, pretty much, with my with my friends from the podcast. I get to meet up with Darian, Jarrett. Eric's gonna be there for a day. I get to go on a road trip with uh, Darian and Jarrett to Bristol. We're all gonna be in the, in the hopping in my Tacoma. This is uh, an exciting time. It's really changed my personal life in a big way. I'm a full time car salesman, but my personal life, I'm Danny B. Who do I owe all this to? NASCAR. For existing. For giving me something to be passionate about. For giving me and my fiance something that we can enjoy together. For giving me and my friends something we can, we can work on and uh, produce videos about. That's all I can say. I'm Danny B. Give the video a like. Drop a comment. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Won't do this ramble stuff all the time. But I felt for this one it was the best way to do it. It's from the heart. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.